Hey, everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, Blake Bortles and the reigning AFC South champion Jacksonville Jaguars. They face off with Ryan Tannehill and the Miami Dolphins. With that, let's get down to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Standing by for the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. This crowd a few minutes ago stirred into action at the side of their Dolphins emerging from the Hard Rock Stadium tunnels, and we are ready to go as the Dolphins get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gond and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? Two teams on opposite ends of the Sunshine State. The Jags and Dolphins are underway. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. They will be led out by their seventh-year quarterback from Texas A&M, Ryan Tannehill. Unfortunately for Ryan Tannehill, as the improvement was starting to develop in the NFL, two knee injuries in the last two seasons. The second one cost him all of 2017. Right now, if you watch the Dolphins, you believe as Ryan Tannehill goes, so do the Dolphins. carry for Frank Gore back home here in Miami and he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field holding offense so on the big tight end Still first down. each and every year we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college so it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Tannehill hands to Dre. And nothing doing on his first run. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The Miami Dolphins starting lineup now, and Kenyon Drake, a guy to watch. He has the ability to affect the game in so many different ways. In the return game, bringing it back himself. Also can be a gunner on the punt coverage team and did that very well at Alabama, but has the ability to run, it, run the ball of the backfield as well as catch it. Kenyon Drake, you can use him so many different ways. Check that out, check that out. Draw play. Tannehill gives to Drake. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. From the gun, here's Tannehill. Holding offense. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. 
Here's Matt Hawk now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. <laughs> Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. So here's the first drive now for the Jags. They'll be let out by their quarterback from Central Florida. It's Blake Bortles. And you can see why he was the number three pick when he came out in the NFL draft. 6'5", sturdy guy, strong arm, led his UCF team to a big bowl victory over Baylor, and runs the ball way better than he's ever given credit for. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10 at the 40. to throw. It's Bortles. And Austin Safarian Jenkins has it. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Less than a minute to go here in a scoreless first quarter to this point. Here's Leonard Fournette, 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Look at the starters for Jacksonville. And for the running game, got some good news and bad news this week. I'll give them the bad news. You can give them the you're good news. you one of those news. guys you go bad news first. No, I'm just saying you're nicer, so I'll let you give them the good news. <laughs> now, the bad news, the team's saying that Leonard Fournette likely will remain out through the Jags bye week on November 4th. Yeah, he's missed five games already. Likely a six next week in London against the Eagles. But here is the good news. Thank you for letting me deliver that. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Jacksonville did pick up former 49er Carlos Hyde from Cleveland on October 19th in exchange for a fifth round pick. So what that tells me is obviously the worry about Leonard Fournette, but they got a back who's similar to him, a high volume ball carrier who's a thumper inside, still trying to set a tone for the Jacksonville offense. No one ran the ball more than the Jaguars in 2017, and we could very well see another carry here on third and short. Now Bortles. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 at a first down. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Fournette, a first down carry. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. So not much to speak of scoring-wise in this first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. on the give to Fournette. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. The safety, Rashad Jones, brings him down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Throwing his Bortles on third down. 
That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Holding offense. So they decline it as that will bring up fourth. And I know that yardage and field position are keys to any game played, but you got to consider downs when you're talking about penalties. And they wisely did not take that one and made it fourth down. On is Josh Lambeau now for the Jaguar field goal. This is a 49-yard attempt. Right hash. And Lambeau will put this one through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you can get to the red zone and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Jakeem Grant now to return. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Tannehill and the Dolphins break the huddle. Come up first and 10 at about the 32. Drake will start the drive on the ground. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. The throw on second down is Tannehill. He'll set up the screen to Drake. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Out of the gun, Tannehill. And this is going to be incomplete. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Well, it's like that at just about every position. And sometimes, if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. But Charles, this Jacksonville offense that we're about to see again here, last week against Houston, put up just seven points, dropped them to three and four. They've now lost three in a row. But and the big story out of week seven was that Blake Bortles got benched in the second half. They brought in Cody Kessler. And they have not been getting, what is it that Jalen Ramsey termed, playoff Blake? Mm -hmm. 
because playoff Blake was pretty good last year. Didn't have a good game running, I mean, throwing the ball against Buffalo. Used his legs to win the ball game. Had a nice game against New England. Had another nice game against New England this year in the regular season. But nine touchdown passes for him on the season, but 13 turnovers, eight of them interceptions. That's been the big problem. That one big touchdown pass to TJ Yeldon, this quarterbacking situation, it's fluid. Cody Kessler may get a shot. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. On second down, here's Bortles. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Shotgun now for Bortles. And he finds Safarian Jenkins. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Bortles to the former Jets, Safarian Jenkins for the Jags first down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Bortles now on first down. Oh, incomplete. The rookie had it and lost it there. And it'll be second down. Well, CD taking a peek at some of the injuries from around the league in week seven. We did have a few. Quan Alexander on that Bucks defense went down with an injury. They'll be monitoring Sony Michelle in New England. Now remember, they already lost Jeremy Hill, Rex Burkhead out of that backfield. So a couple injuries to note. Certainly, and Quan Alexander in the middle of the Tampa Bay defense, which was already struggling. They may not get him back the rest of the season. Sony Michelle, they're hoping to get him back after a few weeks. Albert Wilson in Miami has made big plays all season long, has a hip injury. That could cost him some serious time, if not the season. LaShawn McCoy, Melvin Gordon, they're hoping to get them back in the upcoming weeks. Yeah, interesting that they won without Melvin Gordon last week. That was a big win. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. A couple of first downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Bortles now on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. TJ Yeldon, the one he was looking for. And that'll bring up second down. Well, we've got a second here. Let's take a peek around the league, what's coming up week eight. A couple big games as we near the halfway point of the season, Charles. I'm mainly looking at the Philly and Jacksonville and London, and then New Orleans and Minnesota. That should be interesting. Yeah, you're exactly right. Philly and Jacksonville, both teams struggling right now. The Eagles have already lost four games. They lost three all of last season. Both of those teams need a win in a big way. New Orleans and Minnesota, the Saints are on a heck of a roll right now. They've won five in a row, but the Vikings quietly have won three straight and seem to be getting their footing on defense again. And how about Green Bay? They had the week off this past week. Big win over San Francisco at home on a Monday night. They now head out to face the 7-0 Rams in Los Angeles. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that one. That is a big one indeed. Aaron Rodgers, Todd Gurley, let's do this. 
Again, they'll throw with Bortles. Caught, Safarian Jenkins, right side. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. First down, Jacksonville, the passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now, the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. On first down, Bortles. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Now a timeout. Seven seconds left in the first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And Lambeau will put this one through, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Now after the made field goal, back out Lambeau to kick this one off. Here comes Grant on the return. So a couple of field goals, that's all we've been able to muster through two quarters of play. 6-0 is our count at the break. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome everyone to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL, give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that, but for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. The Jaguars in possession of the lead, and they will get the football as we are underway in the second half. To return it is Corey Grant. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, 
change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. Bortles leads the Jags up first and 10, right at the 30. Second half beginning with a run from Fournette. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. 380. Here's a carry for a former starter. This is TJ Yeldon. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. Holding offense. That one whistled against a big right Still tackle. Second down. You'd think being able to fire out and block it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty. But it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. After the penalty, it's Fournette. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Give him five yards on the run there, but it'll leave him with a definite third and long on the horizon. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing, but with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. On third and long, it's Bortles. And complete over the middle, Safarian Jenkins. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. And the Jaguars send out their punter. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone you know not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Dante Fowler in on the stop. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. On second down, it's Drake fighting to get back to the goal line. I don't think he got there. He did not, did not get back there. It's a safety. And Charles, at some point, you can't keep worrying about big play. Can this be perfect? You just have to get the ball out of the end zone. And in the offensive huddle, that was discussed when they called the play. Just get out of the end zone. But you know what's interesting? A lot of the times in the defensive huddle, they actually call a set and then say at the end of it, get a safety. So it's preached, it's coached, it's thought about. So a free kick situation forthcoming from the 20 as they'll punt this one away. Free kick. 
kick out of bounds. Kicking team. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. leads the Jags up first and 10 right at the 30. A handoff to Fournette. They find some open field here. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. They'll run it again with Fournette. And this has been a familiar sight all afternoon as they stop him behind the line. He lost two there, and it's third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means it might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Now Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. First time they've looked his way in this game, he comes through picking up the first. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they look to try and finish this one off. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Here's a give to Fournette, and he'll take this one up close to about the 45. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. Again, it's Fournette. 
And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause of the action. A timeout here defensively. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Leonard Fournette. And a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So they come up on second down, and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. On second down, here's Fournette. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? Maybe the old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. So that'll back them up five. Still first down. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. Down to a knee for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. with a knee to the ground, and that should do it. Brent, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defensive play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was... Uh, you can't score one point. All they needed was two points. Well, you can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three. They got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too?
That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. And with that, we sign off from Miami.